Welcome back to you. Now, my next guest isn't exactly selling ice cream to the Eskimos. Uh, she is, though, selling ice cream to China. Serendipity ice cream has been around in Australia since 1966, so it's well ahead of the curve when it comes to the premium ice cream market. Indeed, just recently, the company is signing a three-year licensing deal to supply its product to China. It's currently working on new products and flavours to meet the ever-changing demands of that market. Well, Serendipity's CEO is Sarah Mandelson. She now joins me. A warm welcome to you. Interesting that you've said quite honestly, this is not a health product. We don't eat this to kind of keep our waistlines in check. You haven't done anything to play with the old faithful recipe, have you? No, certainly not. Mm. Um, and indeed, we think of ice cream as being um, health food for your soul. And if, if it's not, then it's not doing its job. Yes. Mm. How did you get into this? Because it was very much, you know, this is a generational thing now. Oh, it is indeed. Yeah. My mother started the business accidentally um, in 1966, as you say. Um, she was an American diplomat, uh, lost her job for marrying an Australian. Mm. As uh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Um, and so she was unemployed, missing ice cream of um, America and started making her own ice cream at home. It accidentally turned into a business, but that was a good thing and hence the name Serendipity, a happy discovery by accident. Did she call it that from day one or that was kind of a, a, a working title that suddenly found its feet? Uh, when she started making ice cream at home, um, it didn't have a name, it was just um, a home project. But I think by the time that she was making it commercially, she realised she needed to have a name. What are you going to call it in China? What does that name translate into? Well, that's a really good question and one that we're working very hard on at the moment. It's quite a difficult word to say, even in English, mm -hmm. for some people. Yes. Um, and so, yes, very By difficult. By me saying time. oat instead of oat cuisine, <laughs> of course. But, you know, at what point do you say this is a real breakthrough for us? We can actually give up worrying about the mortgages on the fourth home because this is going to, China's going to really pay all the bills. <laughs> well, it's going to be the mortgage on the next factory, actually. Right. Um, we're just starting out in China, so it's going to be a case of seeing how, what the market wants, how it's going to grow. Mm -hmm. Teaming up with the, an ASX listed company, how important is that to have, a, a, I guess, a link here in the first instance to get that product off to China? And also, how important is it that you have a footprint, a real office in that booming economy? Oh, it's absolutely crucial for us. Um, we don't have much experience uh, in China or indeed much experience overseas, although we do have a great deal of experience mm. here. Mm. So it's really important for us to have a company working with us who has a great deal of experience in the dairy market in China. Yeah. And that's our foot in the door. Problems with a lot of the perception of dairy products in that economy in the last few months because of tainted baby milk formula, that sort of thing. How much is that now in PR terms, how much damage has to be rebuilt? I mean, time-wise, are you timing-wise, are you confident this is a good time to launch? Oh, this is an excellent time because we're marketing our product as an, a purely Australian-made dairy mm. product. So mm. it's safe and that's, that's crucial. So even the mark of cane, it doesn't extend to our products? No, no. Right. Australia has a really good reputation for dairy products and indeed for food in general, mm. a clean, green reputation. The palate as well, the, the, the delicate Chinese palate has to be said, how do you tweak the ingredients. We've got some product here. Is that the sort of product out of your range or is it the gin and tonic laced product that would do well in China, <laughs> for instance? What's no. likely to do well? I don't imagine it's going to be the gin and tonic. Because they love whiskey. Yes, indeed they World's do. World's biggest consumers. Well, yes, yes, but yes. Um, gin and tonic, mm. okay. um, Initially, um, we're looking at sending in the, um, mm. the traditional European flavours, the chocolate, the strawberry, the vanilla, mm -hmm. despite the fact that we also do some really interesting uh, Eastern flavours here, which sell quite a lot here. Because that's an interesting move, because you, uh, do you not get a sense that you'll be going head-to-head -head with the Goliaths proverbially out there by going in on their own patch, as it were, the vanilla flavour, the, the strawberry, the known and, you know, kind of almost forgotten ones? To some extent, yes, we will be going against some of the Goliaths, um, but we, being a small company with a great deal of experience, 40-something uh, years of experience making ice cream, we also have the ability to tweak flavours quite quickly, come up with new flavours for a new market quite quickly. So that's one of our strengths. Tell me about, I, I want to get back to the product in a minute, but this licensing agreement signed with Montec International, so at, at what point do you say, well, 
it's your funeral, guys. You get it right. Uh, you've signed up to, <laughs> to this merger for three years. Uh, and, and how much final say do you get at this point? Oh, quite a bit. Mm. Um, nobody's talking funerals at this stage. Mm. We're all still very optimistic yes. and looking forward to a, a great working relationship. Yeah. Um, so I really can't mm. uh, predict the future on that one. Does this injection of, uh, as a capital injection that you're getting from this deal, what will that therefore enable you to do by merging, you know, your minds and, and, and operations? How do you next go to the next phase of growth? Um, well, there, obviously there's going to be some significant uh, growth in terms of output. Um, we also need to make sure that uh, our existing facilities have the capacity to meet that output. But fortunately we don't expect it to explode overnight. Mm. We expect a steady incremental growth. And it will all continue to be manufactured right here. What, what about the temptations for transplanting that over to China itself mm -hmm. and doing the nuts and bolts there? Uh, what we can look at doing down the track is uh, making the product in China using Chinese labour but using 100% Australian ingredients shipped ready to manufacture there. Mm. We've got to try it because the clock's oh, ticking. We, we need to try it, as, as everyone does. So this is this is your most popular line, isn't it? Yes, this it's also our shot. most champion product. Right. Okay. It it's melting under these lights, my goodness. Yes. How would you describe this? Because you know, we can't you know, obviously put this through the, the monitor for people, but how would you... <laughs> Sadly. You know, you give me a, a taste sort of sensation on that. Well, that's a dark, dense chocolate ice cream with a dark chocolate ripple through it. Mm. Um, and usually we find that people are speechless after a, a spoonful or two. <laughs> <laughs> In moderation, that one. Calorie counts on that? Oh, don't bother. <laughs> Do don't bother counting. <laughs> that is fantastic. You've got to stay on that one. Maybe a little zoom in on that. Uh, and as I'm holding that, tell me about the other one if you could. Well, this one is fig, honey and pistachio. We call mm. this the new chocolate. Um, mm. It's one of our haute cuisine flavours, mm. if you like. Um, take another spoon. So I'm not going to put that one back. There we go. For the crew. What have we got here? Oh, look at that. I think the name really says it all. Fig, honey and pistachio. Mm -hmm. And these are all Australian figs all, and all... All Australian figs, all Australian pistachios, all Australian mm -hmm. honey. Naturally fresh Australian dairy products. Can you taste the honey in that one? Oh, yeah. Is that yeah, manuka yeah. honey? No, it's not a Monica honey. Right. Let's move on. Let's try the right. next one. Now, this is one of our sorbets. Dairy free, gluten free, fat free. And that is, uh, that's interesting because that's almost like a sorbet in terms well, of. It, so this is this complete sorbet? Yeah. Right. All right. 100% natural, made with 100% green energy. Mm. So and everyone's growing cafe limes as well in their gardens, so that will go down very well. Mm. It's, the, it's the end flavour. That's very nice. Can we get that coconut aftertaste? We very do fancy. wish you so much success Thank you. with that product Thank you. and the expansion. Many thanks for coming on. My pleasure. Sarah Mendelssohn there, of course, from Serendipity. We'll take a break. We must take one to enjoy some more of that. And when we come back, we're going to speak with the godfather of Australian cuisine, Tony Bilson.